I'm just preparing to travel to Brisbane to the doctor's appointment to surgeon Nick Lutton, a colorectal surgeon, um, to discuss my peritonectomy. I'm taking somebody with me this time. Last time I went to this particular surgeon, I didn't take anyone with me and I don't think I took in quite as much information as I could have. So my cancer journey started uh, in at Easter in uh, 2018 when I had a bowel obstruction and was diagnosed with an ovarian mass which turned out to be a mucosal cyst, a mucin cyst, um, 20 centimetres by 12 initially and then 20 by 14 by the time the last scan happened and I was operated on at Royal Brisbane Women's Hospital in Brisbane with a wonderful gynae-oncology team there. During that surgery, they took out my appendix. I had a small bowel resection, um, had the hysterectomy, uh, ovarian cystectomy and nephrectomy, and um, that those specimens were sent away and the pathologist um, has, had diagnosed an uh, appendiceal neoplasm, which basically means I had appendiceal cancer and that had was stage four because it had moved from the original port the appendix and had moved to the ovaries and had now moved to the peritoneum and that's what this uh ho this visit to the hospital today is about so i go and i spend some time discussing it with nick lutton and um i have done <clears throat> a little bit of reading on the internet and uh, the more i read the more disturbed and distressed i get so i have decided to not do any reading or much reading at all. So today I went to uh, Brisbane to the Princess Alexandra Hospital and had a conversation with colorectal surgeon Nick Lutton about my uh, pseudomyxoma sinus peritonei, my gelatinous cancer, gelatinous mass cancer that's on in my abdomen uh, on my liver stomach and bowel and we had a conversation about what my treatment options were and we even asked the question about what happens if i don't do any treatment at all and the response to that is it just slowly grows and squashes the internal organs and basically you die of malnutrition options are great so the surgery is uh, about 10 hours on the table and it involves a much larger incision than the previous incision that I had and um, HIPAC, which is um, hot intraperitoneal a chemotherapy treatment for about an hour and a half. And that penetrates uh, about three millimeters around the organs uh, to assist with uh, killing any cancer cells. There is no cure for uh, pseudomyxoma peritonei, PMP. Uh, is only uh, continual treatment options. Um, we asked about um, survival rates. Survival rates are <clears throat> um, really quite good. You look like wag. Uh, so um, about 45 to 70% chance five years survival and about 50 to 60% survival rate for 10 years. So we asked about how long I was going to be hot for and uh, hot for about a month, but that will be probably the month in hospital. So surgery is 10 hours on the table, a couple of days in ICU, ventilated, um, extubated and single and hot for uh, a couple of weeks and then into general population in a ward uh, for another week or so. Uh, so anywhere between 14 and uh, 28 days in hospital. Uh, 6 to 12 month long term recovery rate. Um, I asked is you know, was it a late diagnosis? And he deems it's quite reasonable to be diagnosed at 50, in your 50s, I'm 53, so that gives me 
a 60% survival rate to 63 years of age. Bonus, I've got an expiry date. But anything could kill you in reality. You can have a car accident or your plane could fall out of the sky or, you know, whatever. Um, the, um, the rates for complications is about 40%. Standard die, 3%. Uh, on the table. 40% uh, for other complications such as bleeding, infection, uh, DVT, um, all the standard lung dysfunction, um, organ failures, just all the standard stuff. 40% complication rate, wound dehiscence, all that type of thing. So rare, one in a million, Generated from the appendix, uh, neoplasm, a carcinoma. Um, yeah, it's going to be a bad. It's going to be a bad year. Um, consent hasn't been signed yet, so aiming for December or January surgery dates. Um, they only do two in a month in Brisbane. One of the thoughts that you have, so if you're going to be in hospital for uh, a month or so, um, what kind of support I'll need through that time and what kind of support I'll need after that time. So I would anticipate I will prep, because that's what I am, I'm a prepper, um, you know, take soup and chewing gum and the stuff that I need when my because uh, I suffer from paralytic ileus as well. Uh, the few times that I have had surgery so that I know that that is going to be a standard uh, complication that I plan to potentially face. So I will take uh, the soup and the chewing gum because they will give me the um, uh, peppermint water and the gastrobrifen to assist with um, gastric motility. So I am just blessed to be surrounded by people <clears throat> who have offered me physical and psychological support uh, over the last six months and uh, so uh, I am really conscious that because this is going to be another six to twelve months that I just don't want to burn people out with my journey and one of the things that I consciously now do is make sure that if I do go out or I am seen in public that I am high, I am up, I am not dragging people down into the abyss, the sleepless nights, the pain, the uh, gas, the, the gastric issues that I have, the obstructions, etc. Um, I managed... Um, most of the obstructions um, now by myself at home I've only had to go to hospital that few times so I'm, I'm learning to deal with that um, I asked the question today about why my why my breathing is such an issue and uh, he didn't have an answer for that so it could be related to um, just the, the bowel not functioning well and, and swelling and pushing on the diaphragm um, we don't necessarily think that it's a cardiovascular issue, but it's something that I potentially am going to have to investigate. I do need to physically get fitter for the next surgery, so that's going to involve um, walking and swimming and cycling. So I will, I will set myself those targets to be met by December or January, whenever the surgery is. So when I am in hospital, I do anticipate that I wouldn't, won't get uh, any or any visitors because one, it's such a distance for people to travel. The pay for parking for a PA is going to be an issue and, you know, there's nothing anybody can do. So your thoughts and, and uh, is going to be the thing that bolsters me. And if I have connection to Wi-Fi or, you know, internet and just communicate via messenger, 
will be the, the greatest gift that <clears throat> anybody can give me through that period of hospitalisation, as well as a few people bringing me fresh underwear and recycling my jammy PB jammers, my PG jam jams, uh, we, yeah, we shall see what the logistics of that month is going to be, that two weeks to a month is going to be. But I am, as I say, I'm just absolutely blessed to be surrounded with the amazing support that I've had up to this point, um, the downsizing and the prepping for uh, a lifestyle where I don't have to drive, I can just walk to everything and just really proactively just focusing on, on getting well. So it's going to be yeah, an interesting year.